Hello and welcome to our daily service. Day by day, our goal is for our hearts to be lifted to our great God. He gives us so many gifts, and one of his greatest is the gift of freedom. The Bible says, if the Son sets you free, you should be free indeed. Loving Father, thank you for the amazing gift of freedom that you give us through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us now to delight in your generosity to us and to live in your freedom. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Yes, God is very generous indeed. In Psalm 16, King David praises God for his gifts and we're going to join in with that song of praise now. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. This week we're looking at Genesis chapter 2, and we've seen already that God created Adam out of the dust of the ground, and he placed him in a magnificent garden, the Garden of Eden, to work it and take care of it. And today we're looking at two more verses, Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. I wonder if you can recognise these words. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I'm free. Well, lovers of the Disney film Frozen will perhaps instantly recognise Elsa's song. Elsa very much speaks for our age. It's an age in which freedom is one of the great virtues. Freedom understood as autonomy. Freedom from the constraints that come from outside us. I'm free to do what I want, when I want. I'm free to be whoever I want, without being oppressed by traditional morality, or parental expectations, or religion. Well, in this understanding of freedom, the God of the Bible is seen as a great enemy. He constrains us. That was certainly my view when I was a teenager, before I turned to Christ and understood the good news of the gospel. I saw God as a cosmic spoil sport. And that if I really followed him, he'd crush the life out of me. He'd diminish me. He'd enslave me. How very different from what the Bible teaches. You know, the first words that God addresses to Adam in Genesis chapter 2 are these. You are free. God is an amazingly generous God, and he entrusts to Adam a wonderful garden. And it's full of great things. We're told the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Yes, God is the great life creator, the great life giver. This is a wonderful place to live in. And Adam is free to enjoy, free to roam. It's a generous provision with one single prohibition. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will certainly die. Now that rule is not because God wants to diminish and crush Adam. Quite the opposite. Think of a lovely playground at a school, and the head teachers placed a fence around the playground to stop people going outside. That's not to diminish them or crush them, 
Quite the opposite, it's so that the children can continue to enjoy all that's there in that wonderful playground without the risk of roaming off onto that busy road right next door. Well, that would be disastrous. God's command here is for Adam's good. The tree of no the knowledge of good and evil represents and symbolises God's authority and his alone to determine what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is evil. God alone must be God. So Adam's free to enjoy the wonderful garden, but he's not free to set himself up as God. He's not free to say from now on, I'll decide what's good, what's evil, what's right, what's wrong. Because that would be terrible. It would be destructive. It would diminish him. It would enslave him. And sure enough, sadly, that's what happened. In two weeks' time, we'll be looking at Genesis chapter 3. And Adam fell for the Satan's temptation. And he took of that fruit. And although the devil said it'll give you life, it actually killed him. The devil said, in effect, it'll make you free. It actually enslaved him. And so we inherit that slavery to sin and to death. But God is the generous giver. He's the God who delights to give freedom. And so he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to take upon himself the penalty for the way in which we say, no, I'll set myself up as God. And the result he's is able to give to us as a glorious gift, the gift of freedom, the freedom of living in relationship with God again. It's a wonderful gift. To follow Jesus is not a form of slavery. No, he is the one in whose service is perfect freedom. Let's turn now to pray to our generous God. We begin with a prayer of thanksgiving. Together we say, O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for life and health, for home and friends, for power to work and leisure to rest, for all that is beautiful in creation. We praise and magnify your holy name. But above all, we thank you for your spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for freedom from the power of sin and death, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts, we pray, with all joy and peace in believing, and help us to show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, our ever-present help in trouble, our fortress and our God, calm the anxious fears of all who turn to you, give strength and healing to those who are sick, and courage and skill to those who care for them. Grant wisdom and clarity to those in authority, and humble us all to call upon you, that we may be saved not only in this life, but also for that which is to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray, O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song is a song of praise to our great God, who is both Creator and Redeemer.
Well, let's live today delighting in God's amazing provision for us. Above all, his gift of freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of his Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and with those we love now and always. Amen.